In order, today is Tuesday, October 11, 2016. There's a voting meeting of the Prescott City Council. Welcome, everybody. Looks like we've got a pretty full crowd today. Of course, after we get through with some of the presentations, I'm sure they'll probably empty out. But if you want to stick around and hear what's going on in, in the city, uh, we, we hope that you do. Mayor Pro Tem, do you have any introductions? Oh, wow, look at all those people. No, but I would like to say happy birthday to our Jean. Happy birthday, Jean. Happy birthday, Jean. Happy birthday, Jean. At this time, we'll have the invocation by Reverend Kimball Arnold of the St. Luke's Episcopal Church. Let us pray. <clears throat> We pray for all who serve this great city, for those elected by the people to represent the people, for the employees, for the first responders, and the valuable services each provide the city of Prescott and its citizens. We pray for those who serve to make decisions for the benefit of all, and for those whose role it is to provide information and guidance for the members of the city council. May they work together in making the challenging decisions. We welcome and offer prayers for Michael Lamar as he assumes his new position as Prescott City Council, um, Prescott City Manager, to work for the benefit of our community and also offer prayers as we welcome his family. May all in our community work together for the benefit of all. We offer thanks for the generations of brave men and women who secured our liberty and continue to do so. Amen. Amen. Stay, uh, remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance by uh, Councilwoman Orr. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Roll call, please. Mayor Oberg. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Emerson. Here. Councilman Blair. Yes. Councilman Lozell. Here. Councilwoman Orr. Here. Councilman Shiska. Here. Councilwoman Wilcox. Here. All present. Mr. Lamar, do you have any announcements? Um, no, I don't, but I want to thank the community for its warm reception, and I don't think I've been blessed twice in two days ever in my life, so thank you very much for that, <laughs> Reverend. Um, my family and I are very happy to be here, and um, we're very committed to this community, and uh, hope to get to know each and every one of you over the next however long we're here, which we hope is very long. So thank you very much. I think Councilman Shiska had a couple of comments he wanted to make. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I've got two people that I would like to commend. Uh, the first one isn't actually here, but Chief Black is here. Um, if you'd all look on the, uh, if you happen to get a copy of the Prescott Woman, our very own Deputy Chief, Superhero Amy Bonnie is on the cover, not of the Rolling Stone, but on the cover of Prescott Woman. And uh, the article is awesome. Chief Black has a little article on there herself. And I think that uh, it's fantastic that uh, a couple of stellar city people would be on this in this magazine. So that's my first one. And the second one, I hope you all see what I've got here. Um, this happens to be my personal um, iPad, but one of the neat things is we used to get a packet about this thick of agenda items and, and, and supporting documentation, and Dana has worked really hard to make it all electronic, and that saves a lot of money, saves a lot of paper, and also saves a lot of copy time for these gals. And it's just a fantastic situation, and I really appreciate that, Dana. Thank you. Thank you. And she's working on the rest of the council. <laughs> I, I've got my, Mayor, I've got mine. Mine's just smaller. <laughs> okay, I think we got a couple of proclamations. Um, proc first proclamation, proclaiming October 22nd, 2016 as the 5th Annual Hope Fest Arizona. And Jaylene Long, is she? I think they chose me because I need a lot of hope. Come on, come on up here. How are you? Good, thank you. This is a proclamation of the City of Prescott Hope Fest Arizona, October 22nd, 2016. Whereas Hope Fest Arizona 2016 make a difference every day 
is a free all day safe fun community event whereas on october 22nd the fifth annual hope fest arizona will come alive on the courthouse plaza with concerts guest speakers family fun zone and the brand new northern arizona suns will ho host a three-on-three -three competition for everybody to enjoy whereas hope fest serves family resource fair is designed to powerfully impact lives by purposely fostering collaborative re relationships with a broad spectrum of community service providers, including civic, government, faith, business partners, to unite, mobilize, and serve through love. The fair also provides solutions to the immediate needs of our friends and neighbors of the greater Prescott area to be empowered to those making a difference. Whereas all are invited to help by donating canned food, newly gently used clothes, winter gear, coats, socks, sleeping bags, and other items such as our neighbors would provide that will keep people warm in the winter. Now therefore, I, Harry Oberg, Mayor of the City of Prescott, do hereby proclaim October 22nd, 2016 as the 5th Annual Hope Fest Arizona Festival with a Purpose. Congratulations. You so Would you like to say a few words? While the Honorable Mayor did mention many of the aspects of Hope Fest Arizona, we just thank you so much for the city for allowing us to have this event there for five years. As he said, not only do we have this fun, amazing festival that all families and people can engage, they can find out where to volunteer, they can find out what's going on great in our community, but within it is Hope Serves, which reaches out to our community with connective services. We're still looking for volunteers, and if you want to get on the Hope Fest bandwagon, join us. And it is free to all, and the Arizona Suns are bringing that three-on-three -three competition for area youth and adults. And you can go to on the uh, HopeFestAZ.com and get kids and adults registered. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Item B, proclaiming October 2016th as Colonial Heritage yeah. Month. Ah. And Sharon Johnson, it's here to accept. Too. Well, you got a big crew. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Uh, this proclamation is uh, for Colonial Heritage Month for October 2016. Whereas Jane George Chapter of the Soci National Society of Colonial Dames, 17th century of Prescott, is locally sponsoring the National Colonial Heritage Month during the month of October 2016. And whereas Colonial National Colonial Heritage Month brings to mind the first courageous settlers who arrived in America and who determined the direction for the formation of our country. And whereas the members of this society, by virtue of their lineal descent from those early arrivals, feel an obligation to work for the preservation of the priceless legacy that these early arrivals left to all American citizens. And whereas they continue to convey the true meaning of the inheritance by reminding us that our privilege to live in a free country has stemmed from loving our country, obeying its laws, respecting its flag, and defending it against all enemies. Now therefore, I, Harry Oberg, the city, uh, mayor of the city of Prescott, do hereby proclaim the month October 16th uh, 2016 as Colonial Heritage Month in the city of Prescott and we encourage all citizens of the city of Prescott to observe this month as a means of reinforcing the priceless legacy that we inherit from our inherent from our citizenship in order to pr help preserve our rich culture and heritage with deep respect for the principles upon which our great country was founded. Thank you. Would you like to say a few words? Just a couple. I'll, I'll try to keep it at a couple. Um, ladies and gentlemen, as uh, stated in the proclamation, the Colonial Dames is a heritage organization, but uh, we can't rest on our heritage. Uh, so what we do today as an organization is we support um, patriotic education, we support veterans' issues, 
and we support the preservation of historical buildings and marking of historical buildings and monuments. Um, Jane George chapter is focused on the Yavapai County area, and we are very active here, particularly with our veterans issues at the, at the VA. Um, we have one member, this lady right here, <laughs> This lady right here that I'll bring right on over here. She is actually my chapter vice uh, president, but we are lucky enough that she is also the state president, Arizona state president of Colonial Dames. And just two weeks ago, we had a marking of a historical marking at Fort Verde State Park. And I'd like to invite all of you to take a little drive over to Fort Verde State Park and see the beautiful plaque that this lovely lady here worked very hard to arrange. And had a lot of help. <laughs> okay, maybe just a little bit of help. But we thank you very much for the proclamation and we look forward to continuing our service to uh, Yavapai County. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to proclamations or correction? Presentations. Um, item eight, Chamber of Commerce, introduction of new businesses. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor, Council, and welcome, Mr. Lamar. My name is Neil Sneller, and I'm the membership director for the Prescott Chamber. This past weekend, the Prescott Chamber, Prescott Area Young Professionals, and Meals on Wheels had our annual charity golf tournament. It was a little bit rainy, but everyone played through, and we raised, we raised lots of money for, to benefit Meals on Wheels. We also hosted Fall Fest on the Square, which is the last arts and crafts show of the year. Our next mixer is coming up Thursday, October 20, at Prescott Lakes. It's co-hosted by Prescott Lakes and Prescott Power Partners. Everyone is invited to attend. And Wednesday, November 9th, we're hosting our quarterly Women in Business Luncheon, and our very own Chief Black will be our guest speaker. Please visit Prescott.org to register online and all are welcomed. Now typically this is where I introduce all of the new members, but instead of me doing that, we're going to deviate and you're going to hear directly from one small business owner that just celebrated their official grand opening, the English Garden Tea Room. To tell you more about this exciting new business is the owner, Gidget Mosier. Hi, good afternoon. Um, I was here a few weeks ago and we came for a liquor license and I wanted to take this opportunity to come back and to thank you because we finally did get to celebrate our grand opening this weekend and let you know what a welcoming surprise it was that we were able to accomplish what we did in such a short amount of time. We had a lot of support from a lot of people, but we are very, very fortunate that Every time we ran into any kind of an issue, we had somebody that we could call. And I wanted to let you know how important that was to us, my husband and I, as small business owners, that we knew where to go and we had somebody that could help us with these issues. We've only been in Prescott a few years, so this is new to us, and we wanted to really become a part of this community. And the best way for us to do that, we thought would be open a small business. We plan on being here a while. A tea room was not exactly what we thought we were going to do, but <laughs> that's where we've ended up. And we had a fantastic turnout this weekend. Um, it is something that um, the landlords help us develop over at the old firehouse plaza. So I just wanted to let you know how grateful we are um, and how hard um, we worked and we plan to be here for a while. So we do appreciate all the support that we've had so far. And I wanted you to hear that from a business owner. So thank you very much. Well, thank you for bringing your business here. Thank you. Anything else, Neil? That's it. That's it? Okay. We'll move on to the next item. Item B, United Way regarding United or unique partnership opportunities presented by Annette Olson. Good afternoon, Council, Mayor, and welcome, Mr. Lamar, to our wonderful community. We're glad to have you here. Um, I'll, come on up. Uh, Mary Ann Suttles is our chairperson of the board of directors. She was a three-term city council person. I'm sure most of you know her. Um, she sends her regrets. She's recovering from surgery today. She wanted to be here, but she also sent Terry Rake, who's our treasurer. So he's going to present with me. 
Um, we, we are almost a perfect community, but we do have a few social issues, and United Way of Yavapai County is here to address those issues. What we do is we finance um, health, income, and education to try to work on the social issues that we do have. We have great partnerships with our nonprofits, and we would also like to become a partner with the City of Prescott. Let me give you a few figures of some of the programs that we support. Um, according to the Arizona Republic paper, the state of Arizona bases the numbers of beds needed for jails on fourth grade reading levels. Did you know that? So we support after school education programs, helping students grow from third to fourth grade successfully. It works so well in Dewey Humboldt, we extended <coughs> it to other schools. One in three children in Yavapai County go hungry, so we partner with Yavapai Food Council, who made 535,000 meals for students in Yavapai County last year. That's a lot of meals. They only have two staff members, so they leverage their volunteers quite well. Another issue that's near and dear to us here in Prescott is homelessness. We support case management services, which has shown when you support case ma homeless people with case management, a 96% success rate to go from homeless to permanent and stable housing. So those are some of the programs that we support. Um, in your packets, there's lists of others that we support, but we really would like to work with the City of Prescott employees to be able to continue and expand the impact that we could have in our community. Um, we have I have been told 2,500 nonprofit organizations in Yavapai County. So United Way of Yavapai County can be an umbrella organization and the fundraising arm for those 2,500. We represent all of them. So even though we choose health, income, and education, when it comes to employees choosing to give to organizations, they can choose those three areas of, of categories of impact, or they can choose their favorite charity. We really are a pass-through and an overseer for all of them. Uh, I know I put unique in my verbiage to get in front of you, so I guess I better go with unique. <laughs> One of the things I'm doing as a new director for this organization is starting a center for nonprofit excellence. And what that means is I'm providing classes and workshops for these nonprofits to have the skills, help train their volunteers, help train their board members, and help train their staff to leverage the money that they're given to its maximum. So I kicked that off last week with a grant writing workshop. It was a wonderful workshop, and we'll probably do a workshop every month for our nonprofits. So I thank you for letting us come before you and talk to you about United Way of Yavapai County. I hope that we can be a partner with an employee giving campaign with the City of Prescott employees. And I would open it up to questions for Terry. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions, comments from the yeah, council? Go ahead. Um, you know, I think that uh, our new city manager, I don't know who uh, used to do it, other than many years ago, Dick Cooper, who passed away, did it. Uh, so at this point, how does the city of Prescott let the employees of our community, our working community, know that they can invest in United Way? I certainly think it would be a good idea for maybe Annette to do a presentation at some point to the employees or maybe multiple presentations so you can get with the folks that have shift work and the like. Great. Uh, one way to gauge interest would maybe be to do some kind of survey monkey to see what kind of interest our employees have in participating in such a program and perhaps Annette could provide us with some information that I could supplement the survey monkey with. Great. That'd Does that terrific. sound like That's a reasonable? A great next step. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Okay, thank you. Right, we thank appreciate you. everything you're doing for us. Thank you. Okay, we're going to go on to presentation of AOPA awards and I'd just like to go ahead and uh, preface this uh, presentation. Um, you know, we had that about a week ago, I think it was Sunday before last, Saturday, Friday and Saturday, a uh, week ago. And um, it was well attended. Uh, I know that uh, Emory Riddle and uh, the AOPA worked on it diligently for a year to get it set up. Um, and I can tell you that the uh, uh, results were far above what we thought we would get. Uh, I think we were looking for up to about 300 aircraft, and we had almost 600. We were looking for, you know, maybe up to 4,000 people coming in, and when they hit 6,300, they were turning people away because there's no place for them to park. So it was really a great event, and uh, what I'd like to do now is take a moment to just uh, present the OAP awards to those who were so uh, important in getting this uh, to be such a successful event here in Prescott.
This is a certificate of appreciation uh, in grateful appreciation of Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University for outstanding support and dedication while preparing for and during the 2016 Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association fly-in in Prescott, Arizona. On behalf of the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association and the city of Prescott, I commend you for ongoing commitment to general aviation. Thank you. The Prescott Airport Users Association. <laughs> Just a brief comment on behalf of Ember Riddle. I would like to ask all the Ember Riddle alumni who are standing up here to raise their hand. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> yeah. Including myself. I just make that point because I think Ember Riddle is so proud to be a proud member of the Prescott community. And because of that, our alumni are so active in making this happen. There were a ton of alumni at uh, AOPA who also including Katie Pribble, who's our Senior Vice President for Communications, alumni from Prescott here, brought the show back. So that's, um, it's just great for us to be a part of the community here. Thank you, and I'm, I was the uh, local event director, so I had a few things, a few people I wanted to thank here, and uh, and really, uh, I know we're, we're honoring a lot of the businesses and uh, academic organizations and the uh, uh, tower and the people that contributed, but uh, this this event couldn't have happened without the city support, and we really had phenomenal city support here, and, and, and Mr. Mayor and, and council members, I uh, really want to thank you for all your support. And uh, specifically, um, you know, the Recreation Services Director, Joe Baines, uh, Michelle Stacy Schroeder for all the uh, event permitting, uh, the Community Service Coordinator, uh, Larry Steffens, uh, Field and Facilities Director Stephanie Miller, she and all the uh, support from Solid Waste, all the dumpsters and the trash cleanup, it was just phenomenal. Uh, street Maintenance, Bobby King uh, used the mower and field equipment to prep the event. Uh, street Maintenance Supervisor Dean Thompson for all the uh, right-of-way permitting and the large digital signs that we had. Uh, Prescott Fire Department uh, Chief uh, Dennis Light, I saw him here earlier. Um, and of course, uh, Prescott Police Department, uh, Chief Black is here, want to acknowledge you guys did a great, great job with uh, all the mobile officers we had and for the evening event and coordination through uh, uh, Lieutenant Brambilla. Um, all the folks from Economic Initiatives, uh, Jeff Burt, Wendy Bridges, Tourism, Don Prince, uh, Tim McAlfrin, um, and then really want to specifically call out the airport team and, and truly these, the folks at the airport did a phenomenal job. Dave Sievers, uh, Cliff Bond, uh, James, Eric, Michael, Kathy, and uh, we had uh, four fantastic Embry-Riddle interns. Uh, they were just amazing. Hunter, Nikki, Michaela, Aiden, and then uh, specifically the airport operations folks, uh, Kurt Dalton, Jesse Baker, and of course uh, our airport manager, John Cox. 
uh, really a phenomenal support from the uh, from the city of Prescott. So thank you very very much. I just want to point out how when great members of a great community get together, you could make great things happen. So thanks to everybody. You know, I got was a little concerned when I showed up at the factory on Saturday and I saw the parking lot full. <laughs> I thought I was having to pay all that overtime to employees. <laughs> uh, no, we're, we're excited we're able to uh, support this great event. And apparently we've been doing it for quite a while. As my mother reminded me, uh, she got the word all the way back in Gainesville, Florida that we've been using the parking lot there. So. <laughs> and uh, if anyone's looking for jobs out there at Ruger, we got plenty of openings. So come on out. We need the help. I'm just going to say a short word on behalf of the tower. Um, this was truly a team effort. Uh, we have approximately 20 people at the tower. Um, the manager, our supervisors, staff, and air traffic controllers. Um, and every single one of the controllers changed schedules or worked overtime in order to be um, involved in the event. So uh, on behalf of them, uh, I would like to say, um, you know, again, it was, uh, it was a challenging, you know, I've been an air traffic control uh, air traffic controller a long time and those two days were um, my most challenging ever uh, so um, and then and finally after you know recognizing again the air traffic controllers and, and staff that uh, took part in the event I'd like to say thank you to the uh, town of Prescott the airport people that worked so hard with us to ensure that it was a safe and successful event so great great people we appreciate uh, all that you guys did for us John thank you Mayor and Council, if I may, uh, I just want to have one uh, other token of appreciation on behalf of the air traffic control. Um, they worked approximately 800 planes in a very short uh, time span. And when I talked to them about that and how impressed I was uh, at, the, at the amount of work they, had, they did, and they said, well, it's just an average day. And, and no kidding, an average day at Prescott Airport and the air traffic control tower is an average of 800 plane operations a day, either a takeoff or a landing. Sometimes it exceeds 1,500 in a given day, and these guys do an excellent job to keep the skies and the ground safe at Prescott Airport. So on behalf of all of the participants at the airport that watched in amazement how you guys managed all of the traffic, this is a banner to hang up in the air traffic control tower. And it was signed by a lot of the stakeholders that were involved in the effort. And again, thank you, Air Traffic Control. Thank you, all the partners. Dr. Ayers, like you had mentioned, uh, this is what teamwork looks like. And this is what a cooperative effort, the results of a cooperative effort looked like, too. So thank you for all your service. Mayor? <coughs> Yeah, we had uh, of the, uh, gosh, we had 600 plus aircraft. We had 6,300 people that actually came in to participate in the event. And we did have volunteers, no kidding, from as far away as, as the state of Virginia and Texas and Montana just to participate in this event. So that's how significant it was, not only at General Aviation and not only at Prescott Airport, but for the city of Prescott and this entire community. Here, here.
Okay, we'll move on to the consent agenda, and I've been asked to pull item I. Consent agenda item A, approval of minutes for the um, September 22nd and 27th council meetings. Item B, approval of contracts for the renewal of Westlaw online legal research contract and the Thompson Reuters contract. Item C, adoption of resolution number 4358-1567. Approving an IGA with Yavapai County for Constable Office Services. Item D, approval of purchase of Fortinet Network Security and Network Equipment from Transource Services Corporation. Item E, approval of payment to MNJ Technologies for Bitdefender Endpoint Security Software Support and Maintenance. Item F, approval to purchase Fire Department Extrication Equipment, Jaws of Life from Western States Fire Equipment. Item G, acceptance of U.S. Department of Justice Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistance Grant and approval to purchase one Reconnaissance Scout XL Micro Robot for MinCon Robotics. <coughs> Item H, adoption of resolution number 4355-1564, approving of a memorandum of understanding with Prevent Child Abuse Arizona for information and sharing and use of services. I'll go ahead and read item I. It's adoption of resolution number 4356-1565, approving amendment number one to the development agreement with James 110 Investments to accommodate the airport trunk main project, transversing the Walden Ranch development. Item J, approval of contract with RFI Consultants, LLC, for special inspection services for the South Tank Rehabilitation Project. Item K, approval of amendment number three with Duke's Root Control for the final one-year extension. Item L, adoption of resolution number 4357-1566, approving a joint fund agreement with the United States Geological Survey for data collection with the Big Chino Subbasin. And item I is adoption of ordinance number 4995-1533, an ordinance of the Mayor and Council of the City of Prescott, Yavapai County, Arizona, affecting Prescott City Code Title I Administrative by amending Chapter 1-3 Penalty, Section 1-3-1 General Penalty, Misdemeanors, Civil Violations, Continuing Violations, and creating a new Chapter 1-14 Code Enforcement. Mayor, I move to approve items A through H and items J through M. Second. Yeah, motion and second vote, please. Passes unanimously. Discussion on I. Thank you, Mayor. I am, after you ask if uh, anybody had, or if I had a concern about any items on the consent agenda, and I said no, I, I started thinking about item I. You know, and oftentimes, uh, when you read through the staff report, Oftentimes, the developers get a black eye, and oftentimes the city council and staff gets a black eye. And I just thought it important enough to pull this off to understand that a developer, a rancher, the city of Prescott, our staff, and the amount of money um, that this development and what the city went through to rearrange all these things was important enough to have Henry talk about. And with that said, I'm always the guy up here too that's complaining about how we go out and we fix these roads and we put in sewer lines and then immediately we come back tearing them up to upsize or tearing them up to replace whatever the case may be so if you'll explain to the public and to the council uh, the process that you took as far as public works director to help this community out appreciate it good afternoon mayor and council city manager thank you councilman Blair I uh, I'll be more than pleased to say that. And we appreciate the fact that you did pull this agenda item out. A few uh, months ago, if you remember, you approved the developer agreement uh, with James Investment for Walden Ranch. Uh, among other things, what was agreed upon in their property, we have an 18-inch sewer main that needs to be upsized for future uh, uses. So the developer was going to actually relocate the sewer main and upsize it at their cost. So there's no issue. If you let everything go, that's what is going to happen. Um, several months ago or a year ago, we were not exactly sure of the timing of this development, but we are now we have a pretty good relationship with the developer. So if they go ahead, relocate this sewer pipe and upsize it at their cost, among other things that you have approved in the last couple of years is our CIP program and most importantly our centralization plan. For centralization we need to upsize this very pipe. What Walden Ranch has 
this is just a small portion of the entire pipe that needs to be upsized. So we had an option, let it go, they do it. So go back in about two or three years, tear up their brand new road, and let your phones ring off the hook, <laughs> or develop a relationship and work with the developer. And I greatly appreciate all of them, and Mr. Rick Chapman, I believe, is here as well. So we worked as a team. They are going to upsize the entire pipe as we need it for our program for the next two or three years. At the very least, they are going to save us 280, 300, possibly much more, and we are not going to go back on a brand new development, tear up the road. This is the very first step towards centralization, a $42 million project that you approved about 18, 19 months ago. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Question, comments from the council? Thank you, Henry. Okay, do I have a motion? Move to Thank approve, you. Move to approve item I. Second. A motion, second vote, please. Passes unanimously. <clears throat> Move on to um, item 10. Item 10, the liquor license agenda. Mayor and Council, there's one special event liquor license on today's liquor license agenda. It's a request for a Series 16 Fair Festival special event liquor license by Superstition Meadery for an event to be held at the Holiday Courtyard of the Grand Highland Hotel. The application has been determined to be in compliance with city requirements and is being recommended for approval. And with that, I'll answer any questions if you have any. Questions, comments from the council? Any from the public? Do you have a motion? Mayor, I move approval of a Series 16 Fair Festival of Special Event Liquor License application for Superstition Meadery, LLC, located at Holiday Courtyard of the Grand Highland Hotel, 154 South Montezuma Street. Applicant Jennifer Herbert, City Application Number 16-0067S. Date and time of the event liquor sales, Saturday, November 5th, 2016, 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. Second. Second. Got a motion and a second vote, please. Passes unanimously. Regular agenda. Item 11A, approval of one city contract number 2017-125, an agreement with the Greater Prescott Regional Economic Partnership, GPREP, and two, the annual membership payment for fiscal year 17 in the amount of $40,000. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Jeff Bird, Economic Initiatives. Uh, this agenda item brings GPREP to Council for a quarterly update and receive GPREP's request for FY17 funding in the amount of $40,000. Uh, GPREP initiated its active and ongoing role of marketing the Prescott region to prospective relocating companies in Southern California and the Chicago area about six months ago. Uh, this outreach effort is intended to generate leads for Prescott and the other communities and is usually considered the primary function of regional groups such as GPREP. To update the council on its activities and answer any council questions, we have two representatives here with us today, uh, Mr. Dean Beck, uh, who is president, uh, board of directors, and Rich Heath, who is the uh, outgoing executive director of GPREP. Dean. Hello, Mayor and Council. Do we have do we have a clicker? I'll be brief. Um, real quick update uh, on G Prep. Our goal, as Jeff said, is to market the region to bring base jobs to the Prescott area. We do that through marketing to companies directly and site location companies that look to relocate companies. Um, our partners this last year that we've been hap very happy with, our site, lo site Location Partnership is a marketing company that does direct marketing to companies looking to relocate. Applied Economics, I'll talk about more in a minute. We work closely with the Arizona Commerce Authority. Uh, Zoom Prospector <laughs> is a GIS tool uh, that APS has been perfecting in our area to get good GIS information and data out to relocating company and specialized publishing is our marketing arm um, site location partnerships their goal is to let 
people in industries in Southern California, Chicago, these are small manufacturers, know that Prescott region is here and what we have to offer them. They do that through direct marketing, email blast, trade shows. Uh, we've sent representatives to trade shows, web promotion. That's the, that's the shotgun approach. That's getting our information out to as many people as possible. Um, who are we trying to trying to attract aerospace and defense industries, metal fabrication, medical devices, uh, firearms are big in our area, packaging and materials, i.e. print pack. We, we understand that we need, to tar we need to target low water using people that bring high wage, high benefit based jobs to our area. And we're, our goal is to market our area to California, Nevada, Oregon, Illinois, manufacturing areas that could in their region be experiencing cost changes, et cetera, which would make their companies want to look for a relocation. Um, this last year, we, Richard Heath or other members of our organization have attended Cornet uh, trade shows, uh, Remax, the MRO trade show in Dallas to meet with site selectors. Um, we, they also went to uh, Chicago, the food and packing trade show. Um, and our site location partners represents us when we don't attend the trade shows to make sure that our information goes out to all the trade show attendees as well. Um, quick update, a lot of trade show exposure, uh, e-blast e out to a lot of companies, um, working directly with site location companies, 55, site locators that we've touched personally to let them know that if they have a client looking what we have to offer in our area um, again talking about slp the e-blast uh, companies that have contacted us back because of this are black oxide manufacturing firearms manufacturing and a human research human tissue research company uh, again this is High volume, low return business. Uh, you gotta touch a lot of people looking for those right ones that are looking to move and bring their jobs here. Uh, applied economics, this was an initiative we undertook with the advice of Jeff Burt and the other, the other economic development professionals in the area. We did a cost comparison of doing business in our region and compared that to doing business in Anaheim, Los Angeles, Denver, Chicago, San Diego, Phoenix, St. George, Riverside, San Bernardino, Las a and Las Vegas slash Henderson. We then took that information that we could say, we could tell those companies looking to relocate, here's why you can do better in Prescott, and some, for com some companies they couldn't do better here, but that was targeted research that we could then use to market to them to tell them why they would be better off here than somewhere else. Or if they're looking to relocate, why would they be better off relocating to Prescott versus going to St. George, Southern Utah, or staying in Southern California? Again, working with the Arizona Commerce Authority, staying connected with their staff, especially their Southern California offer, office and Peter Ruiz there. He's the ACA staff's in office there. They're constantly touching people that are looking to move to Arizona, and we want them to know that our region is just as viable as Phoenix, Tucson, and other places. Zoom, pro, Zoom Prospector, uh, the GPREP organization has purchased the license for our area through APS, with APS. Uh, this provides up-to-date MIS, MLS, uh, and good data on the area. So when the, somebody calls to say, what's your, what's your demographic? How many people do you have between 20 and 40? What's your educational attainment? All this information is in Zoom Prospector. We can quickly get that information out. It, uh, its secondary function is that it has, uh, or it's actually its primary function, that's the secondary function. The primary function is it acts like LoopNet or CoStar listing available properties, available land, brings in so, so that we can quickly disseminate information on the area so that if someone's looking here, they can get an answer quickly on whether this works for them or not. Specialized publishing is a marketing contract we have to market GPREP and our region. Progress to date, um, catalog of building and sites in the area, uh, bringing together the demographic and workforce data so that that's readily available for anyone looking at our area, getting the community profiles so that anyone contacting us knows what it makes Prescott unique, what makes Prescott Valley unique, what makes Chino Valley, Dewey, Humboldt, and, and the county as well. Having that information under one roof 
to quickly disseminate it is very important, we feel. Um, we have been internally, uh, aside from SLP, we have sent out marketing brochures and flyers to many prospective clients. Uh, we worked, we were happy to help sponsor some of the AOPA and get information out to all those, hoping that maybe those private pilots have businesses or connections there. Um, we've attended trade shows, we met with site selectors, all to spread the word of why would somebody want to do business in the Prescott region. Um, we continue to reach out to companies, we continue to reach out to site selectors to bring them here and provide a familiarization tour with our area. For 2017, we'll continue to market with our partners. Um, we have a strategic marketing plan that's been adopted. We also just went through a internal mark, internal strategy of to, re, to revisit what it is GPREP's mission and goals are. We have reaffirmed those. They are very similar to what they are. It is to market our region to prospective employers and bring base jobs to our region. Uh, we will continue to blog, e-blast, communicate with anyone looking to relocate in any way possible. That, that is our goal is to, to get the word out about Prescott. Uh, we, we will continue to prepare fact sheets, cost of doing business of analysis. Those are all ongoing functions of GPREP. And we will continue to, to travel to Southern California as often as possible to meet with companies or anyone looking to relocate here. Um, we have also, through Richard Heath, our outgoing director, he has tried, he's lent assistance where possible to the biofuels initiative for the juniper clearing, working with the uh, county. Um, hopefully we get, find somebody who wants to buy a lot of juniper because we have plenty of them. Regional scorecard. It's always tough to judge these things, but there have been good things. I think this is important for everyone to know. There's been good things occur in our region. Um, and a lot of this was the work of your own internal marketing, Jeff Burton, his, and Wendy Bridges and their staff. You had Make Stride Prosthetics bring new jobs. On Prescott Valley, you had Superior expand and bring 15 to 20 new jobs. Chino, you had Frontier Technico. Um, Vinyl Visions ended up in Prescott through the work great work of Jeff and his team and that deal started uh, in Prescott Valley uh, Final Vision started because they had a working relationship with uh, the, the window manufacturer there and the M&I windows they wanted to be in the region they came to the region they worked with Prescott Valley they ended up in Prescott terrific success story new jobs for Prescott Very, I think that's great for our region that's me I'd be happy to answer any questions the council and the mayor may have. Councilman Lizell? I, I don't have any questions, Mayor, but when if the presentation is done, I'll have a statement. So. Okay. So you said you were waiting for it? Yeah, after that. I don't have any questions on his presentation. Okay. Any more on your presentation? No. Um, I guess the only the, the other item of information is that we our director is, uh, has taken a new job, so we are interviewing interim directors and would be going for a full director search, but business would continue during this time. We've done our due diligence to ensure that. So thank you for your time. I do appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Questions, comments from the council? You want to start out? Sure, thank you, Mayor. When GPREP first started, I think it's three years ago, I was in favor of supporting this organization and then we've discovered um, our budgetary um, hurdles that we have. And the past three months, we've started a liquor li or a, a, um, a, li a business license, uh, sober living ordinances we're going to have to enforce somehow. And now we've got a vacation rental um, ordinances that we're going to have to. Uh, enforce uh, the forty thousand dollars out of the general fund, which is the strained fund. Plus, we already have an economic development department. Um, you know, it's kind of redundant. I think that forty thousand dollars would be better suited to give Michael and the code enforcement a better hand with all these things we put on his shoulders. And to deny that, I. I 
I can't overlook that, and I can't support it. I can't support $40,000 of G prep this year. Councilwoman Benor. Thank you, Mayor. I have a, a page of reasons of why I am supporting this effort for G prep. Uh, I would remind and let the public know that in June we passed a city budget that included $40,000 to go to GPREP. I believe it's extremely important that Prescott be at the table in a regional development of business and supporting our businesses. I said it when I was running for city council and I'll repeat it here today, is prosperity does not end at the city limits. It's extremely important that we promote regional development. We have just spent a couple of sessions on strategic planning and at the very top, uh, not maybe at the very top, I'm not going to prioritize, but certainly the airport had a huge um, play in our strategic planning. I believe that the regional development from GPREP is, is something that is extremely important in helping us develop our airport. We've said it over and over again. Uh, regional development is important. We need a mechanism. We have businessmen and women that have worked on developing this organization of GPREP. It evolved from another organization. We constantly call on those folks to help us with business development. And I think it's important for us to put our money where our mouth is. It's $40,000. That is no small amount of money, and I understand that completely. But I will tell you, I think the return on this, on this investment is huge to Prescott. It's a huge to Prescott Valley, Chino Valley, and Dewey. We need to be at the table. I would go as far as to ask, to ask GPREP that we be at the table when they're talking about bringing in and hiring and finding a new um, executive director. I think that's extremely important. Uh, you know, we're, we're doing well with tourism. We're doing well with housing. However, I tell you, we have some issues in commercial right now, and, and we need to be helping this region develop commercially. Um, I think we are sending the wrong message to Yavapai County, to Chino, to Prescott Valley, if Prescott does not stay within this organization. I am 100% behind our going forward, um, and I may have further comments later. But thank you. <coughs> Councilwoman Wilcox. Thank you. I agree with you, Councilwoman Orr. Um, I'm very much in favor of being a member of GPREP, contributing member financially. As they say, a rising tide raises all boats. And if we are a partner in this effort, not only our boat will go up, our financial boat, that of our neighboring communities will. Some people will choose to live in Prescott Valley. They may work in Prescott and vice versa, or Chino Valley or Dewey Humboldt. But we're all part of the same Quad City region. And we're talking about regional economic development. When we think regionally, we all benefit. So also in the early years of an organization like this, you really cannot measure the return on investment dollar by dollar. It's a long-term process. And we've, we're third year into this now. And I'm very impressed with what's happened so far. I think we're really on the track to for, to attract more um, businesses and manufacturing industries. We don't have a lot to offer in terms of financial incentives because we're somewhat constrained by state law and our charter. But we do have a lot to offer in terms of who we are as a city and, and what we're surrounded by. And in order to get that word out, we have to have aggressive salespeople like Richard Heath and our own department. Jeff Burt and Wendy Bridges. And I really support this effort. Jessica. Thank you, Mayor. If we don't do this, we're penny wise and pound foolish. I think that if we're going to ask the other communities in this area to participate with us in regional opportunities like the airport, then we can't all of a sudden say, we're taking our marbles and going home. We need to sit back and really think about what we're doing when all of a sudden we pull our marbles. Economic the, our economic development department does not have regional interests. We need 
to have a regional organization that is going to bring the region success so that our economic development department can react to those kind of leads when they come into the area. Companies expect, today's companies expect a regional response. They're not going to react to cities going out and trying to pull them in. They want the region to react. They want to know that the region is together. This is not the region being together if we pull these funds. Once again, we're being penny wise and pound foolish if we pull this money. Councilman Blair. Well, <clears throat> I've been here for a while, and that while is a little bit longer than Lamerson, but I supported the G prep and have, and even before that when it was cap, and I think there's value to G prep. My only heartburn has been and still will continue to be. And Dane, thank you for your presentation. This is the first one I've gotten here as a council person. It's the first one the community has gotten to specifically point out the mission statement. Still the mission statement's not clear to me why the private sector, and there's a bunch of them here. Uh, Mike Fan is sitting out there, Bob Bean sitting out there, people that I respect sitting in the audience. There's always a cost of doing business, and I think what we as, as people that sit on this council need to see is what that return on investment is. And we're not seeing what that return on investment is. It makes me a little bit apprehensive to spend $40,000 out of the general fund when we don't have it. So being able to come to us and saying, here are the things we're working on, and some people would come to me and say, you know, what is, what is the benefit of GPREP when you have the Chamber of Commerce, you have the Downtown Partnership, you have our own economic development person, Prescott Valley's got an economic development person and foundation, they have a chamber. So are we do, being redundant? From one standpoint, I'd say yes. From the other standpoint, I'd say no. But I think we all need to work together on this thing, and I think it's important. But when you sit here three years in a row and you have money taken out of the general fund and you're saying, what have we received from that money? You know, it's pretty hard pressed for me to say, well, let's put another 40000 in for it. I'd rather see the fact, I mean, spending the $40,000, I haven't seen a breakdown of the other people that are providing to this group, how much Prescott Valley is providing, how much the county is providing, Dewey Humboldt, who are the partners, and what is our overall objective, and, and, and how strong is that? I don't want to see us put money in it again after year after year, and then two or three years from now have the, the, the outfit disbanded. So from my standpoint, I'd rather look at the city manager. He's new, but I'm going to put him on the hot seat. I'd rather have us, my, my major heartburn is $40,000 out of the general fund. And I'd like to look to see if there's anywhere we can pull the money out of rather than the general fund. I don't know whether it would fall underneath the bed tax of what we're trying to achieve or if that's the only place that we have to go. Um, I'd, like to, I'd like to know if we've done that research. I'm getting a lot of shaking of the head no. I mean, we could certainly look at it, Councilman Blair, but off the top of my head, I don't think there's anything. I would defer to Ms. Elms. The language in the ballot measure for the bed tax restricts the use of the bed tax to tourism, develop, tourism and recreation development. It does not talk about marketing the region for other types of businesses. It's very specific in state law that it's related to the hospitality industry. Thank okay. You. Sir. Mayor, if I could address, I, and again, I would have to talk with Mark about this, but oftentimes um, regional economic development organizations are heavily funded by utility companies, uh, especially power companies, because those power companies tend to benefit but when an employer comes, <coughs> a factory or a plant comes, because those, fa those plants and those factories tend to be high electricity users. So. The energy companies um, contribute significantly to regional economic development because they see potential for developing more customers for their their power systems. I don't know, and I'm just throwing this out, and it's probably something we have to bring back, whether or not we could look the same way to our utilities um, developing more, if, if Prescott develops more employers, it develops potentially more customers for our water and sewer utility, and whether a portion of that 
you know, portion of the membership cost could be could come out of one or, or even our solid waste one, for that matter. The problem with solid waste is, is when it's commercial, it's 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 more it's competitive versus you know residential. But there may be a way to look at it that way. But that's sort of a little bit longer term um, in terms of whether or not it meets our our auditing standards. And, and Mark sort of giving me like the shut up look. <laughs> So, <laughs> um, <laughs> Councilman Blair, thank you, uh, Mr. Palladini. Um, the, uh, the, uh, you know, we can definitely explore that option with the legal department, and if that is the way council wants to proceed as we put together our next rate reviews for water and wastewater, which will be done next fiscal year, we could certainly look at other items like this that uh, council would want to consider funding from those resources. Uh, th there are some specific issues with state law that we're going to have to do a little more research on. Well, from my, I, and I'd like to hear from Dane. Dane, if you wouldn't mind. Mayor, if that's okay. I mean, I, I see us, if you might come up for a minute and answer the question. There, there's a good reason why our, our development community and our folks that do business in this community are in the audience. What is the overall objective of the people on GPREP? What is their overall mission statement to do other than create jobs? You've said that, but at what point in time do we feel like we've seen some investment on our money? I think you feel like you've received, re you've received return on your investment when you've brought jobs to the region that bring income to the region that brings sales tax to the region because those people buy cars they buy goods and services in the past year um, you had vital visions come here you had an expansion of superior brought jobs here you had expansion in chino valley that brought jobs here so there has been i run the total for you real quick but We're talking at least 55 new jobs in the area. Is that a direct result of GPREP? I can't make that claim, but I can make that claim. That hopefully that's because we're doing our job to make sure that Prescott and the region are as attractive as possible when someone wants to relocate. Um, so the mission of GPREP is very simple. Advertise, market, to bring base jobs that pay a, you know good base jobs, not, not, not under the not under the poverty line based jobs, but real based jobs with real benefits to our area to support the communities. So my, my statement still stands in the fact that, you know, often we have people that want to come and ask for money, but again, talking to the attorney and, and to the city manager as well as Mark, we're always struggling every time we get into the budget session. They're tight. Uh, uh, where the money's going to come from. And we're talking about d drug dogs and police officers and firemen. I, I think it's behoove of us to look at a long-term solution. If GPREP truly is going to be an answer to the region, it's just not for today, it's for the next five or ten years. So I think what we need to do is find a sustainable source to fund this operation instead of us having this conversation again every single year and busting your chops and everybody else's trying to figure out how we're going to fund these things. So again, it's not about funding the, the group for me, it's about where the funding comes from. So I know that the fact is we owe GPREP a membership due. Uh, they got theirs last year, and I think in June, maybe we can put that off a while and see if we can research where some of these funds might come from, because I think that's necessary. Um, yeah. Why don't you stay up there? I think there's probably okay. going to be some more questions for you. Councilman Machiska. Thank you. Dane, um, Councilman Blair asked about where this money's coming from and how much is coming from each community. As I remember, because I was involved in CAP and kind of the incubation of this whole thing, as I remember it, it was a dollar per it's person living in the community, and, and that was the way it was in, with our community and Prescott Valley and the county and everything. So to date this year for 2016-2017 fiscal year, uh, Prescott Valley is, has committed $40,000, uh, Chino Valley 10,000, Dewey Humboldt 5,000, the county's roughly 28 something, it's, it's not an even number, so I don't remember it exactly, and then Prescott 40, so, and then you have private, private institutions as well, including Yellow Pie College, Embry-Riddle, Yellow Pie Medical Center, uh, and then, then truly private companies, fan contracting, 
are there? So what we've heard is, that, you know, this isn't like the old PAEDC days back in the late 80s and early 90s, where it was a great situation, Prescott paid the bill and everybody else got the benefit. That's not the way it is today. Everybody's ponying up. And I think that, once again, we're cutting off our nose to spite our face if we don't find the money for this and continue to contribute because it's our contribution to the regional effort. We got to remember that the regional effort is where we're heading in just about everything these days. So we've got to pony up and we've got to understand that we've got to be good partners in all this no matter where we find the money. Mayor Pro Tem. Thanks, Mayor. Um, here again, while I don't disagree with anything that's been said here, uh, it's a matter of priorities. Um, we sat here a few minutes ago and talked about code enforcement, the inability, the lack of personnel, the overwork on the personnel we have, trying to come up with some more dollars for what we got. From a basic service public safety perspective, right now for me the priority is to take care of what we got to take care of right here in River City. We have an issue with drug rehab, alcohol rehab, code enforcement. We have an issue with this new deal we're getting in with code enforcement, this uh, I don't know, vacation rental stuff you know we got one guy one and a half maybe <laughs> we've only got so many cops guys it's a matter of priorities if Wendy with a magic wand and Peter Pan flew in here today we could ask for something that isn't gonna happen right now uh, guys the $40,000 will go a long way to paying for a code enforcement officer Councilwoman Orr. Well, I'll go back to my original statement is that we passed a budget in June that had $40,000 set aside for G prep. And we were and, reminded uh, right along, no, we were reminded right along, at this time frame, right. we can deviate from of that. Of course, budget. of course, and I understand that completely. I will go back to what Dane said, is, and Steve, you asked about the return on investment. I would certainly think that the 55 jobs that had been brought into Prescott have certainly more than return on investment of $40,000 that we invested into GPREP, or that we can do that annually. And Steve, you, you said, uh, I'm sorry, Steve Shiska, I'm re reminded of another saying is that, you know, don't step over a dime to pick, I'm sorry, it's the other way, don't step over a dollar to pick up a dime. And, and I think that's what we're doing if we pull out of this organization. Dane listed th the partners in the organization. Those are our partners. We constantly go to them to ask us to help us, whether it's to talk about how we do a better job at the airport, how we do a better job as far as bringing in businesses into Prescott, helping us in many ways with our community. We go to Emory Riddle, we go to Yavapai College, we go to Yavapai County. It's consistently that we all come together and work together to, to pull this $40,000 and to say we're not going to do this until we find a different source for it. I think it's just a mistake. I think we honor our commitment. We move forward. I like the idea that let's talk about down the road maybe if there's another source where we can find this money. But right now we've got this money and it's in our budget. And, and I think it is well spent because I am certain that we will get more than $40,000 on return investment on this. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mark. You're the bean counter. Where in the budget, other than the general fund, which is significantly challenged for police, fire, code enforcement, et cetera, where in the budget do we have $40,000 that can go be put to work. I mean, it's not fair to ask this guy. He's brand new. Well, Councilman, as, as we've discussed um, in the past, um, most of the revenue centers in the budget have specific purposes. The bed, um, the bed tax Allison referred to earlier, the streets fund, of course, is specific to streets. Um, you know, the, the enterprise funds are specific to the rate studies that were done, which dealt with the cost of providing the service. Again, we'll look in the future. 
um, with our legal department to see if there's a possibility to include other municipal services in those, but at this time, you know, they're, they're committed. Um, so at this point, I think you have the general fund for this type of expenditure. Thank you. Councilman Lozell. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Seems like every year I go through this that I've been on here, we pass a budget and every budget year I go, let's hold this up, I don't want this, let's discuss this. And every year they go, oh no, no, we're not spending it until we vote on it. Well, every time one of these issues come up, oh, it's in the budget, we already approved it. If that's the case, next budget year is gonna be a lot more painful because I'm gonna pick every single line apart. Just my point. Any other comments from the council? A um, couple questions I have for you, Dane, is um, where do we fit in selecting a new uh, director? Um, Jeff Burt was, was pivotal in selecting the last director. I would assume he would be involved again. Um, and Jeff's been the conduit between the city and GPREP. We would welcome any input in that. So we have a vote or do we just have a recommendation? I, we didn't vote. I mean, we got we had a cons we had a committee last time that Jeff was part of. Okay. We would welcome the city to be part of that as well. Again, I think the more people that can bring the expertise to the table, the better. So it's done based on a consensus. It's a consensus. I'll be going to the public shortly. Yeah. So if we have comments, we can make them to Jeff, as far as what we would like to see in a director for G Prep. Absolutely, and we would welcome anybody from the city or the council to be part of the part of the committee. So, Mayor, may, may I say something? Um, I think it was very important when we when we had um, Michael Lamar and also when we had uh, Deborah uh, Deborah Black that that we did have input, and and certainly I think it would be a, a really good thing to have someone from this council to sit on that committee as far as when you're talking about an executive director. I, I would feel that we would feel um, a, a little more buy-in if, if we could in fact have an input on your next selection. That would be great. Okay. Uh, a couple questions. Um, I've talked to two people recently. Uh, one guy wants to uh, bring in an India from India. A medical appliance uh, company. Another guy wants to bring in an aircraft instrumentation company from Russia. Are you aware of those? I am not. Um, we're working with Emory Riddle right now to try and get an incubator going out there. It looks like we might have three businesses willing to partner for, with Emory Riddle. Are you aware of those businesses? I'm not. Okay. So I guess one of my concerns is, it seems to me that there's a economic activity happening that you're not aware of. So what is the, what is the matter with the process? Um, I guess I'd go back to our our general mission is to get the word out to as many people to let them know about the region. And if they get here and they choose to partner directly with Prescott and not not come to GPREP first, good for Prescott. Um, if they choose to, if they come through the conduit of Embry-Riddle and they can get here, uh, that's fabulous. Does, I guess GPREP's tried to be core, true to our mission and not do too many things. Um, the question of so our our goal has been to market the area to get to get prospects here to bring leads to the area um, does G prep need to be more integrated probably it takes time it takes to get all those relationships built to be part of the prospect that's the council's job to evaluate okay um, that's all I got for you right now okay uh, oh, yeah have a couple more comments to say here. I did receive a letter. I think all the council received a letter from uh, head of G Prep, but it's signed by Dr. Ayers uh, from Emeritle, John Amos from Prescott, President and CEO of Yavapai Regional Medical Center, Steve Walker, Executive Director of Yavapai College Foundation, Dave Maurer, CEO of Prescott Chamber of Commerce, Michael Fan, President of Fan Contracting, and Bob Bean, uh, president of Affinity RV, and I want to say that these are men I respect, and I appreciate their counsel. And um, you know, they've asked us to take a very serious look at uh, supporting um, this forty thousand dollars to G Prep. Um, 
I also feel that, you know, we do have a responsibility uh, to the taxpayer for the money that we spend, and we have to be responsible to them. Uh, but at the same time, I know it's difficult to uh, go out and start trying to get business to come here and figure we're going to go to one, um, you know, uh, what do you ever call those things you guys go to business um, conventions and figure that you're going to get somebody signed up in the first uh, month or two months or even a year. Sometimes it takes businesses two, three, four years before they finally make the decision to pull the trigger and say, I'm going to go to Prescott, I'm going to check out land, I'm going to, I'm going to move my business. So, you know, I know it's very difficult for us to see um, some of the, the benefits of the money that we're spending short term. Uh, I hope we can see it long term. Um, I guess one of the questions I have, maybe this is for Dean again, or Dane, I'm sorry. Um, what are we doing right now to get a new director? How soon is that person going to be on board? When do you actually need the money? So the process at this point is we've reached out through uh, our contacts in the economic development community. We have four interim candidates that have applied. would be to evaluate those, get an interim director on board the next 20 to 30 days, and then look for a full, it would go out for a full search. That's a, probably a four month process. By the time you advertise, you respond, and you get somebody hired. So when do you need the money? As far what, what's your drop dead date that you really need the forty thousand dollars? It's the commitment we would need now. We'd like I mean I think going out for a regional going out for a search without a commitment from the the largest municipality would not be good. But uh, the the coffers are not desperate. The as far as the payment is not, not needed immediately. Okay. Um, the commitment, though, is important. Okay. So the, um, the interim director, is he going to come to us in a month or whenever you get him on board and he's going to talk to us and tell us what he's going to do for Prescott? If you'd like him to. I think, I think that's important. Um, I agree with uh, uh, Councilman Blair. I feel that Jeep Rep in the past has not been very forthcoming, forthright, coming and telling us exactly what they're doing to spend our money. And uh, you know when I, go, I when I talk to people on the street and talk about Jeep prep, um, I would just say that sometimes I don't get a lot of um, support uh, for Jeep prep. I think a lot of people feel that it's the businesses here that really uh, go out and, and sell themselves, uh, like Jim Chamberlain going out and finding people in California and trying to get those businesses to come here. I hope you're working with him. I'm sure you are. Um, uh, as far as um, whether, whether or not we have the 40000 in the, in the uh, budget right now, we do. Um, we're going to vote on whether or not we really want to spend that money. Uh, I think we can also, maybe in the next few minutes here after we hear from the public, decide on whether or not uh, this is something that should be set aside for right now or it's something that we could go ahead and commit now uh, with a payment later. Um, maybe it's best for us to wait and see just who you get on board and see what that person really wants to do. Uh, what kind of vision that person has. Um, I'm willing to go ahead and allocate the money, uh, but I'm probably more on the, on the mindset to hold the money until we see who you bring on board and get that person's vision and under, get a feeling that, you know, we're going to be successful with, with the money that we're going to put forward. So I'm just kind of giving you that straight up. Understood. Okay. Um, any, anything else from the oh sorry thank you mayor um i would agree with that i from my standpoint again it's not necessarily whether it's forty thousand dollars um it's hard for the, me to say whether it benefits the region it's something that's long term and i i don't see a an effect on it right away however one thing i do know and again not to put michael under pressure however he was selected and i was on the selection committee and his forte was one of his fortes was economic development and from my standpoint, this is the first time he's heard this in our community. I'd like to give him an opportunity to understand this, understand a little bit about our budget with our budget director and, and, and the city attorney and see if there is a way to fund it differently, see if there is a way that we can have a commitment into the future instead of going through this 
you know, jumping through these rings with the fireballs on them every single year doesn't make much sense to me. Uh, so again, one of the things he presented to us when he was actively searching to be the city manager of Prescott was a very nice economic portfolio that says, here's what I was able to do in the region I'm at. I'd like to see what he can do to help us in this situation. Councilman Blair, the idea of regionalization for economic development is crucial in a lot of respects. But there needs to be some accountability from the entity that provides the regional economic development outreach. And I think it's fair to say, Dane, that there's some frustration from this entity with the accountability of this organization. Um, and I would ask if possible, even at the interim director selection, can this entity, maybe even I, sit in with the selection of who you're going to pick for the next four months? And I also think that going forward, if this money is allocated, um, I would think this entity would like to see information provided about ongoing operations more on a timely basis than once a year. I, I mean, I, I, those are the kind of things that I think that are going to convince this entity that this is a good idea. I can speak for my experience in terms of regional is the right approach, but only if the entity providing the regional assistance is accountable to all the entities that are anteing up the money. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you. Um, here, here again, Harry, um, you're the guy that makes up our agenda and moves the agenda forward. And while we have input, et cetera, um, I'm not opposed to regional cooperation. What I'm opposed to is not having the money in the budget to go get some more cops, <laughs> some more drug dogs, and some code enforcement officers. And the fact of the matter is, it's your job to figure out where we've got the money. Things are different than they were last year and the year before. Economic conditions are different. <laughs> what we're dealing with in this town are different. And what I have heard is we don't have the money for this, we don't have the money for that, we don't have the money for this. Priority-wise, public safety is first, second, and last for me. And if we don't have adequate police and adequate fire to do the job we're telling them to do, which includes code enforcement to impose the restrictions and ordinances that we sit up here and deliberate over as to what would be in the best interest of this community, we're not doing our job. Our job is to prioritize what's important. Anything else from the council before we go to the public? Thank you, Dane. Thank you. Come on up. Whoever wants to be first. It's nice seeing you again. It was really nice to meet you again yesterday. And we're welcome to the city. Mr. Mayor and council members, uh, Greg Lazell, you haven't been coming to the sober uh, living things, but you hit the nail on the head. And what the mayor pro tem said is absolutely important. We literally have to have another enforcement person in this town. And that is the most important thing. We need more police, more fire. But I can tell you, I have been going to all those meetings. I am on the committee. And this has just, Steve, you haven't been to any of them. But I am telling you, the mayor knows this. Um, Mr. Blair and I have talked about it. I've talked to Jim Lamerson about it. And if we don't get another code enforcement person, this town's going to really bleed. And I really want to thank you for bringing that up today because uh, Billy's been to the meetings and she knows how people are standing up at the meetings and telling how we need one more person. Michael really needs some help. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, too, with regional planning, um, and we've been here a long time, Steve. I've been here much longer than you. But I will tell you that uh, I have seen uh, Dane's presentation two or three times. I go to a lot of the county meetings as well. And I haven't noticed that there's been the kind of um, information that I would like to have. Um, I really think we need to think about this other position and more police and fire and uh, i really suggest that you folks come to our sober uh, task force meetings because 
it is really an amazing situation and the mayor's been behind us all the way and we're gonna have to have some help. We really have to. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Next. Hi, Mayor. I'm going to speak from a corporate side on this one. In the mid-90s, I was a member of Ford Management. And I know a little bit about what it takes to go out and find a place to open up another site. Uh, personally, it's not the right time for G Prep right now. We're in a zero growth economy. Capital money coming from corporate, no doesn't exist they're buying back their stocks is what they're doing with their profits right now they're not investing it it's not going anywhere number three this this is really important because it's something we have to live with no matter what we Prescott is not on a major interstate we're not on a major river and we're not on a rail line these are all things that big companies look at all we have is an airport that's our lifeline to the world and it's not really up to what we need right now from a business point of view. Because I, I used to fly Ford hoods, fenders, floor pans to the assembly plants on 747s to get them there so I didn't have to temporarily lay off TLO 5,000 people at Kentucky building trucks tonight. And I'll spend whatever I have to do. My budget was bigger than that at the city of Prescott. and it is cutthroat and you have to be there for them if we wanted to have an area out by the airport tax-free manufacturing area you'll get their attention guaranteed the last phone call I had conference call was with a, a member of government in Caterpillar vice president of Caterpillar I asked him to come put a plant in our in the village I lived in and he told me exactly what I had to have and what I did not have to have and what was preferred and not preferred. And based on that, it was a futile attempt. But what I, what I really need to make a point is, is Councilwoman Orr made a statement. She says, it's unfair that the city of Prescott put G Prep on Prescott Valley and Chino and Dewey and Humboldt and all our surrounding community and, and we don't participate. Okay, so on that same thing, that, let's think about this for a second. We need to develop our airport. Now, are those communities gonna step up and give us a dollar to, to get our airport up to speed where it needs so we can bring in and encourage development with manufacturers to come here? No, they're not gonna give us a dime. It's all on us. So, when I, I'm, you know, I'm not gonna lose any sleep if PV and all the rest of them say, well, they don't want to participate in G-Prep. Well, you're right, right now I don't. Because I believe we do need that ordinance officer. That's the best way to spend that $40,000 right now. Because it will affect the most people, the most taxpayers in the city. It will have the most impact. And that's what I think we should be doing, is getting the most for each dollar. And that it will be the most that we can do for our people. If a company wants to come and move to Prescott, I'll tell you what they do. They hire a firm. And they say, in the next six months, find us three locations that meet this criteria. And they, private company, and they send them out. They're impartial, they don't care. They're gonna take the criteria and they're gonna search. They're gonna find every community that meets that criteria and then they're gonna come back and they're gonna tell corporate these are the three communities that we recommend they meet, meet and exceed all the criteria that you've given us. And then board of directors will have a, a say and they'll meet with other plant managers and get their input and so on and so forth and they will make a decision on where they're going. There is no trade show. I'm from Chicago, <laughs> there's no trade show. You're gonna put up a booth and you're gonna entice somebody to do anything more than I can convince any of you to do anything right now. They can't do it any better at a trade show just because the music's playing, it don't work like that. Corporate is cutthroat. I've seen careers crushed in an instant, in, in quarterly review meetings at, at the corporate level. And it, and it has to be a closed case. I mean, no, no backlash whatsoever in order to move forward on something like this. 
and the legal department, they have the last say. And of course, government gets involved at some point too. Okay, but I know what it, it takes to entice corporate to come in and make a commitment because they don't come in for five years or 10 years. They're not gonna make a big commitment. So they wanna know that you're not gonna change who you are 10 years down the road and what you expect from them. 30, uh, 30 seconds. Okay, bottom line is if you are the highest quality, lowest cost producer, your biggest problem is gonna be satisfying all the orders you're gonna get. That's how every business survives because there's always somebody right behind you working double hard to take your business away from you. And we have to keep that in mind. So if you wanna grow it, that's the best I can tell you. Thank you. Next. Thank you, Mayor and Council. I promise to be brief. <laughs> And bless you, City Manager Lamar. <laughs> Three. <laughs> um, I, out of respect to the man that just uh, uh, spoke, um, I don't think Drew Prep is looking for Ford or Caterpillar or any of those large manufacturers. We're looking for Vinyl Vision, An, a nice company that will bring 30, 40, 50 jobs to the community, um, fit in with our community, um, and they won't know us about, about us. They won't know about Prescott if we're not out there making sure they know about Pres Prescott. Um, Greg, to your um, point, I appreciate what you're saying. Um, I wouldn't have your jobs for all the tea in China. Um, you've got tough decisions to make and you have a long list of priorities. Um, the one thing about GPREP is they're not standing here saying, give us money. They're saying, join us and join a lot of private companies that believe me are putting in more money as a percentage of their budget than the city of Prescott is. Tens of thousands of dollars from the private side and nonprofit organizations are putting their money in here and all we're saying is please join us and pay a small percentage of the overall budget. So when you talk about $40,000, your return is a two hundred and fifty to $300,000 annual expense to market our region and help bring base jobs to Prescott, Arizona. GPREP doesn't directly help fan contracting, but it raises the tide for our community and it provides opportunity for young families. And that's why I support it, frankly. Finally, um, regarding timing, I don't think GPREP, based on the numbers I've seen, needs your money today. I think they need your commitment today because right now we have to go out and find a new executive director. And what I don't want to have prospective executive directors looking at is the main community. This is the greater Prescott region. And Prescott's a pretty important part of that region to say, wait a minute, why isn't Prescott in? I think we're gonna have a real hard time recruiting a new executive director if you guys aren't in, frankly. So I urge your support. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next. I'm Bob Bean with Affinity RV. I want to thank you for all the hard work you folks do. Um, I'm a little shocked at some of the things I heard today. I was kind of in the incubation stage of uh, G Prep. There were eight or ten local business owners that basically put their heads together during a downturn and said, hey, our families are leaving. I lost my daughter. Some other people in the room lost their kids. Had to go somewhere else to get a job. Now some of them are not coming back because they've got kids now, so they have to stay where they're at so their kids can get a job and they can put them through school. That's how G-Prep got started. Um, there's been a lot of work in the last four years to put it together. When I started my business here 20 years ago with Fred York, we did $1.8 million a year. We're going to excel over 30 combined this year, just out of one location. It took 20 years to get this snowball to roll. G Prep from incubation to today has a website that I kind of challenge you if you say, do you know about a company that is talking to our city? And we say no, did it come from our website? Did it come from our people at the shows? 
which I'll have to say that these trade shows are very beneficial. I'm on a board of directors with the recreational vehicle business that does two a year, and we recruit massive amounts of business from them. So I think the work that's been put in is just starting to roll. Um, it would be really awesome to see Prescott at the table. I think as far as private investing goes, we're going to continue to move forward with it. It's something that's needed for our future. If we can prepare ourselves with sustainable jobs today, the next downturn, we won't have to look at all the closed doors that we did in this town just four short years ago. So um, I would like to ask for your support. And again, God bless you all for what you do. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Next. I got one comment, Mayor, if I can. Go, go ahead. To squeeze it in real quick. You know, again, I'll go back and say the $40,000. I, I just believe there's a way to do this. And I always keep pushing the envelope to do it. We've talked about a code enforcement officer to oversee the bed and Airbnb that are possibly dry, uh, driven in a big percentage by people that are coming here to recreate. So I'd ask one more time for our city management and the city attorney and Mark Woodfield to look at and expand your minds to think that it's not where the 40000 is, whether it's going to G-Prep to me. It's the $40,000 that are needed in another area right now. And if we can look at the Airbnb being a recreational tool to where we can use that money to, to fund a code enforcement officer, then I would, I would give that commitment 30 seconds here right now. I still think that we need to postpone it if the money's not needed right now and put our staff together to look at the different avenues. Rather than, I'm not a guy that likes to say no. Let's look at it and figure out a way. And just that would be my opinion going out the door right now. Anything? Next. Thank you, Mayor and Council, Glenn Martin and Prescott. And uh, first of all, I want to set the record straight. Uh, Councilman Shishka, thank you for attending one of our ad hoc committees. Thanks, I believe my esteemed <laughs> associate was absent that day, and she may not have been aware that you did attend that. Um, you know, I, I'm listening to this, and it's relatively new to me. But when I was in the corporate world, we had a saying that, don't tell me what you've done. Tell me what you're going to do. Unfortunately, I didn't hear any of that either way with this gentleman's presentation. I didn't hear anything that was in the past, what we're going to do in the future. And I got to tell you, it's not very often that Mr. Blair and I see eye to eye on a lot of things. But I got to tell you, I agree with you, Steve. Um, I think it's time that we take a step back and take a look at what other options we have to fund this project so that if we're going to do something, it's not a battle every budget and so it can go on uh, forward um, and I am also uh, with uh, council um, and Lizelle you know we do need that code officer out there but we also need regional cooperation and we need to build the area up so you know it's not that I'm opposed to that at all but uh, I think we need to noodle this a little bit yeah. thank you councilwoman Orr yes and uh, Glenn I want to say I absolutely agree with you. I've been to, I think, all of those meetings, and I know we need code enforcement. As we walked out of our, of our last meeting, I said to Mike Fleming, we need five of you. So we all know that we need code enforcement. But again, and I know our number one job is public safety, public safety, public safety. But at the same time, our job is also to support prosperity here for our community and to bring jobs, as many jobs as we can to our area. Um, I think we can have both, and, and I, I like the idea, Steve, that you're mentioning. It just seems that we need a code enforcement because of our, our new vacation rentals, that certainly that should be able to come out of recreation. I mean, that's I something see, I think he's we thinking about it already. I certainly see, explore. I mean, that, that to me is common sense. But I go back to what we've just heard Bob Bean mention and what we've heard Mike Finn, Finn mention, and then also our community leaders that sent us the letter. They need a commitment, and they need a commitment from Prescott that Prescott will be part of this regional outreach to bring jobs and prosperity to Prescott. So 
I think we can noodle the $40,000 where to get it. Again, I understand what you're saying, Greg. I remember you absolutely saying that when we, before we approved the budget, is that can we address each of these items again? And of course we can. But I go back to my original statement, is the $40,000 is there, it's in our budget. They need a commitment, and I believe for Prescott not to be sitting at the table for GPREP is a huge step backwards. And we need to be, and it's going to be sending the wrong message. And, and I'm glad that, that Dane is saying that we can be at that table. Michael, I would love to see you at that table, choosing, uh, help to choose a director, because that's, that's critical. That's the leadership. So I, I've probably um, said about all I can say. I've just about gone through my whole page of notes here. But I, I just want to thank Mike Fan and Bob and Dr. Ayers here, and because I know we have. We've tapped them on the shoulder so many times to say, how can you help the city of Prescott? How can you help the city of Prescott? They have given endless hours on the Leadership Advisory Committee, and, and now they're asking us to simply join them at the table. So I ask that we consider doing that and that we make that commitment today. Councilman Blair. Real quick, I, I think that commitment, based upon what I'm hearing, needs to come in two forms. Number one, a overall commitment to give to GPREP and number two that we bring this back later for a funding avenue after our staff does some research. Uh, I, I just got to say that. I mean, I know how critical this code enforcement guy is. I know how critical GPREP is and I think this gives us an opportunity to give them a commitment that right now we support their mission, but also it tells staff that we need to look at how we get $40,000 for a code enforcement person. Any further? Uh Public comment, please. Frank Ayers, Emory Riddle. Uh, I just, uh, I'm not going to help you balance your budget. I have to do that myself. <laughs> and uh, if I ever go, if I, heaven is a day without a budget meeting, that would be a great day. Uh, but I would tell you that there's a couple ways of going forward, and one is harder than the other. Uh, our university has made a significant investment in the city of Prescott and the greater region as well. Our employees, our students live all over the area here, in all, all the communities. Um, we decided that growth was a good thing and we've grown our campus by 40% uh, in about four and a half years, which is impressive. Um, and we've also brought better students at the same time. At the same time, our university has decided to invest, by the end of this summer, we will have invested $50 million roughly in three major construction projects. Uh, an athletic center, a new dormitory that just opened up, and a new STEM building that will be opening up this summer, which will also be a community outreach center, the STEM center, because we'll be bringing students from the high schools and the middle schools to our campus once a week to experience a planetarium, and we're bringing a planetarium to the city. Um, so what you're hearing is that we're in favor of growth, and the thing I've spoken to many of you about before is that one of our big challenges, despite the Emeryville alumni that raise their hand here in aviation, Many of our graduates uh, can't find a job here. Our uh, number one graduate two years ago, the Chancellor's Award winner, uh, his parents live in town, family lived here, wanted to stay here. He's in China Lake in California. So I rise in support of growing these industries. However is the best way to do that, and you're wiser than I am with your budget and how you do that business. But I just think on behalf of the community, uh, we need to invest in that growth. And uh, I think all the different avenues we're pursuing right now with different companies are universities poised to leap off into research, which will bring high-tech companies and companies that produce intellectual property rather than widgets, uh, engineering companies, science companies, biology, chemistry, all those different things as we open this new building and have bring more faculty on board. Those are the things we want to see in, in, in Prescott. So, I'm sure you'll make a wise decision, but I'm just telling you on behalf of Amber Riddle and all our uh, students, faculty, and staff, you know, we're really invested in our university. We're invested in Prescott and in, and in Prescott Valley and Mayor and Chino and the whole area here. And uh, so we hope uh, uh, hope you make a wise decision here. And, and I would one other thing. I think uh, having more involvement um, in mm -hmm. what GPREP does is a good thing from each of the communities, maybe equal representation at high levels so that 
you know on a daily basis or on a weekly basis what's going on, I think would be good. I think more, in this case, more supervision is probably a better thing. So I think that's a good, I've heard that, and I would just want to be in support of that. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Eggers. Any further public comment? Okay, Mr. Pelletini, how do we get a motion that uh, will allow us to um, show our commitment toward uh, GPREP uh, pending staff review of uh, alternative funding source? Well, Mayor, I think this item is is approval of the agreement with GPREP. I think that's a pretty, the motion in the <clears throat> in the agenda is appropriate for that. And then at the same time, I think it's it also would be appropriate, it could be appropriate for council to give staff, city manager and staff direction to explore different funding options for funding economic development opportunities or funding, uh, you, know, all, you know, another, all, any code enforcement or, you know, additional police officers to whatever, whatever sources are available. I, I think that's just separate direction that you can do. Um, but I think the motion in the, in the agenda is so you're saying give direction, but then go ahead and approve the. If you choose to approve the agreement, the motion is fine okay. in the agenda. Right. At the same time, council can give direction to the manager and thereby staff to go explore these extra funding opportunities. Okay. M Mr. Mayor. Can I ask a okay. uh, I'm sorry. Mayor Pro Tem just said he, I just noticed I missed him here. Uh, it's okay. It I, doesn't bother me none here. I get to talk enough. Um, <clears throat> Very similar to Blair. You know, John, we've had this conversation before. Tourism promotion and parks and recreation development, it's up to the seven council people, along with what's legally allowed, to make a definition for those two words. Promoting tourism in the city of Prescott could be inclusive for all those people that want to come here and vacation rental. It could be very bad if you got too many drug and alcohol problems if you're not addressing that issue. It could be considered not good for parks and recreation development if you're chasing people off your major areas and recreational thoroughfares because you got a lot of derelict activity going on. I mean, you gotta have a little bit more open mind to looking at everything you've got available to pay for what you need to do at a given time. Right now, we have several things that we know we need, and we should be researching every opportunity, exhausting every opportunity as to where's the money going to come from, not only to participate in Jeep prep, but to make sure we have adequate police, adequate fire, adequate code enforcement, to do the things. I mean, the bucket's only so full. We only have so many dollars in the bucket. How we spend those buckets is a different thing. And we have to be creative in identifying how we're going to do that. Councilman Lazell. Thank you, Mayor. Um, and I don't even know what I'm proposing here. I'm just going to say what's on my mind. Um, I don't know if I can make a motion that says, um, I move to approve $40,000 as long as it doesn't come from general fund and then pass the buck to the bean counters and let them find it. I mean, that's my contention is it's out of the general fund. And I wouldn't even go with a motion or vote for a motion on what who's and what how's and the future, how we're going to get this code enforcement. I want to know it all up front. So I'm not willing to commit $40,000 today out of the general fund for this project unless that the motion said find it elsewhere. So whether that means tabling it and we get the whole picture later. Uh, I think we should probably table it and get the whole picture before we set people's fingers on buttons. I, I, think, that, I think that people here have heard that the majority of us support GPREP as a question of funding. So I, I, I don't know. Okay. Um, I think I've got consensus from the council here that uh, we want to find another funding source. And um, I think everybody's willing to approve the 40000 for GPREP based on finding that uh, funding source and to give our commitment to um, GPREP to go ahead and move forward in getting a um, 
permanent director. So at this point, um, I think the, the motion we have here is sufficient. It doesn't say where the funding's coming from. So, um, so do Mr. I have a Mayor, motion? I'd like to make a motion. Uh, I move to approve city contract number 2017-125 and approve the physical year 17 annual membership payment to GPREP in the amount of $40,000. Second. Yeah, have a motion second vote, please. Passes five to two. Mayor Pro Tem Lamerson and Councilman Lazell dissenting. Next item. Item B, adoption of ordinance number 5006-1544, an ordinance of the Mayor and Council of the City of Prescott, Yavapai County, Arizona, amending Prescott City Code Title IV business regulations by adding a new chapter 4-11 structured sober living homes, an ordinance number 5007-1545, an ordinance of the Mayor and Council of the City of Prescott, Yavapai County, Arizona, amending the Prescott Land Development Code Article 11 definitions table 11.2.5 regarding the definition of term community residence. Okay, any uh, question or comments from the council on this item? Yeah, I think it's a cake and it's well baked. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I was going to say, Mayor, that uh, Mr. Lavar <clears throat> informed me that he heard a rumor that I couldn't do a uh, council presentation in less than 2,000 words. So I didn't know if that was a challenge or an invitation, but I just turn it over to you for your consideration and decision. That wasn't a rumor. I, I told him that. Yeah, he John. did say that. I think it was, was 4,000 words, I think is what it was. Well, I guess what I could ask is that you give us any uh, updates to the, the ordinance before the, the, we actually go to the public. Mayor, the, or, the ordinance, the amendments uh, to the ordinance from the last draft were to add a definition uh, per uh, Councilwoman um, Wilcox's uh, request to uh, include a definition of house manager. And then in the section dealing with the house manager 24-7 um, awake, uh, the sort of alternative or options for alternative supervision were taken out. So the 24-7 awake requirement is in there. Okay. If there's no uh, questions, comments from the council, I'll go to the public. Any uh, public comment on this ordinance before we approve it or disapprove it? Okay, do I have a motion? There's two, there's two motions in this, too, mm -hmm. by the way. There's two, two different ordinances, one for land <coughs> development code. And okay. So those are, those are First there. motion. Uh, Mayor, I move to adopt ordinance number 5006-1544. Second. Got a motion, second vote, please. Councilman Manor. There you go, now it is. Passes <laughs> unanimously. <laughs> Next motion. I move uh, adoption I'm of ordinance number 5007-1545 pertaining to community residences and structured sober living homes. Second. Got a motion to second vote, please. Passes unanimously. Okay. Next item. Item C, approval of city contract number 2017-087 with Hoskin Ryan Consultants Incorporated for pre professional engineering services for the Goodwin Street Improvement Project in the amount of $571,576. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, uh, City Manager Lamar. My name is Steve Oros. I'm the Capital Program uh, Manager in Public Works, and the item before you today is for a design contract with Husk and Ryan Consultants uh, for uh, one of our uh, key downtown projects we're working on right now in this fiscal year. This uh, project includes uh, water upgrades, thank you, Mark, sure. uh, sewer upgrades, street uh, pavement upgrades, storm drain, streetscape, water quality, and a variety of other uh, elements. Uh, this project uh, touches everything, including uh, being uh, one of the main arteries in the downtown area. Uh, there's 2,700 lineal feet of roadway that's uh, being looked at here. Uh, we did go through a, um, our on-call consultants uh, to identify the design uh, team for this project. Uh, as I mentioned earlier today, this is gonna be a design bid build, uh, our traditional uh, project delivery method. 
Uh, we did look at uh, Husk and Orion's uh, uh, qualifications and available resources and identified them as qualified to perform the work on this project. Uh, the uh, design of the project's uh, about nine months. It will have uh, two public meetings, one early on to get um, input on the uh, types of uh, elements of the project that are important to the community, especially the downtown uh, partnership and local businesses. Uh, the uh, cost of the design is uh, just under 10% of the estimated construction cost, so it's fairly in line with uh, what we anticipate, uh, considering all of the elements that are, we're looking at. Uh, this is one of those projects that we're going to be using some of the uh, Yavapai County flood control money uh, for in the design. So this is another uh, well-funded project. And if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer for you. Um, looks like Cousin Blair. Typical question I always ask. Sure. You did such a great job presenting this, and you're an engineer. Why don't we pay you and not use a consultant? I mean, I, I, in, 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 in all seriousness. No, seriously. With all the people we have mm -hmm. that are engineers within the city of Prescott, why wouldn't we engineer this project ourselves? Okay, good question. And that's a question that we ask ourselves uh, whenever a project comes up. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, this is a, a multi-element uh, uh, project, water, sewer, storm drain, streetscape, landscaping, uh, not a project that we could not do. In fact, we're uh, just finished uh, design on a project that's out for bid right now, uh, the uh, Larkin Street project, streetscape. Uh, our in-house design team uh, completed that one. Uh, we also have the Carlton Alarkin project, which is just uh, south of uh, this area that we're under design on right now. It's another major water, sewer, storm drain uh, project, uh, streetscape. Uh, we're looking to complete that uh, mid next year. So to deliver the projects at the same time in-house, while we have the capabilities and the expertise, it would not be, be uh, started until well into fiscal year 18. Thank you. I appreciate that. In other words, we're busy. Yes, we are. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you. Uh, Oros just took the wind out of my sails. You know, he said they could do it, and the question I had was, then why didn't you? And, you know, and he says, because they're busy. I heard him. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Any other comments or questions from the council? Any from the public? Come on down. Uh, this is just some data information I'd like to share with the council. Uh, I went back to December of 14 to July 12th of this year. Engineering, we've spent uh, over $4 million for engineering. Not including today, which is about another, what, million and a half. Um, City of Prescott, our expenditures funds, 2014, we were at 1,687,000 for engineering here in the city. 2015, it was 1,871,000, and this year it's 2,516,000 for engineering. So we're either hiring people or working a lot of overtime or doing a lot of extra, I don't know what we're doing, but in three years, we went from a million six eighty seven to two million five hundred and sixteen for engineering. And here's four million of it right here. If we're engineering in the city at a record pace and a record cost, how are we still spending four over four million dollars to outside firms? I don't know. But it's a lot of money. I just want to make you aware of it. Thank you. Is the increase based on we have more projects that we're working on, or? That is correct, yes. Okay. So it's it's not really the cost. It's an amount of engineering for other projects that we. That's correct. Or the increase in projects. Yeah. Okay. Uh, over the past couple of years, our capital uh, program in public works has gone from in the $40 million range to over $60 million. So there's a lot of work we're doing. We have about 45 projects at some point in design or under construction right now, and that seems to be the pace that we're at. So there's a lot, we're very busy, including our own in-house design. Okay, 
Any further comments from the public? Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you. In um, clarify, you know, it's always nice to hear you publicly clarify you. these things. No problem. In those projects we're talking about that were relevant to the conversation here with the discrepancy in the dollars are all basic service delivery. Yes. All right. Those are all water, sewer, roads, etc. Water, sewer, streets, yes. Right. So those are projects that that are not parks and recreation and entertainment. So all right. Thank you. Essential services, yes. Any further comments? No. Do I have a motion? Mayor. Uh, I move to approve city contract number 2017-087. Second. Yeah, motion and second vote, please. Passes unanimously. Okay. Next item. Item D, approval of city contract number 2017-098 with Shepard Westnitzer Incorporated for design and other engineering services for the Zone 56 1.5 MG water tank and piping project in an amount of $679,000. Thank you. Um, this project is another one of our uh, uh, water infrastructure projects. Uh, it's called the Zone 56 project. Uh, you can see in the middle of the uh, um, map here is there's a, a new tank that's going to be on the hill there we have uh, a, uh, this one's 4300 lineal feet of uh, upsized piping uh, to connect the tank uh, between zone 7 and zone 56 the project is to improve fire flow and basic uh, water service delivery in this uh, key commercial area along uh, highway 69 and in the area around uh, Presque Lakes Parkway Lamb Chevrolet, Walmart, in that area. Uh, in this uh, pr a process, uh, we went out for uh, competitive qualifications for the project since it was a little, uh, a lot of uh, moving parts to it. Uh, we did have a, a pre-proposal uh, meeting. Uh, we had 12 uh, design professionals, uh, firms represented. Uh, of those 12, we had five uh, submit proposals and uh, the Shepherd Westminster uh, team uh, submittal uh, was rated as the highest ranked firm. We did go into negotiations with them for the scope and fee for the project, and, uh, and that's what's before you today. Uh, the design on this project is about 11 month design uh, schedule, and we should be ready to go to construction about this time next year. Uh, and again, the design portion of the uh, contract fee is about 8% of the estimated construction cost, so it's right in line with uh, what we anticipate. If there's any other questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Questions, comments from the council? Any from the public? Do you have a motion? Mayor, I move to approve city contract number 2017-098. Second. A motion to take a vote, please. Passes unanimously. Thank you. Last item. Item E, City Council meeting scheduled for November and December 2016. Mayor and Council, this item is presented for approval of a revised City Council meeting schedule for the months of November and December. Um, the proposed schedule complies with the City char Charter requirement for holding um, at least two meetings per month. Um, the proposal is to hold a regularly scheduled study session and voting meetings on November 8th and December 13th, and then to cancel the November 22nd meeting, which is the week of Thanksgiving, and to cancel the December 27th meeting, which falls between the week of Christmas and the New Year's. Um, if the schedule is approved, it does not prevent the council from calling a special meeting at any time if there's a need for the council to discuss or vote on an issue. Um, so you can vote on this proposal or any form of this proposal. But if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Councilwoman Wilcox. Well, I have concerns about uh, only holding one voting meeting in November and one voting meeting in December. I think it puts a lot of pressure on staff because it piles everything up in one meeting and it makes our meetings longer, it makes it more difficult for us to pay attention be thoughtful <laughs> I know <laughs> um, and I, I 
I don't see anything wrong with the schedule, but we had for the past three years a uh, meeting Tuesday before Thanksgiving no problem. and then uh, finding another date in December. December 27th, Christmas week is probably not the best, two days after Christmas, but um, either the week before or the week after the 13th yeah. add in there. So I would, I would go for two voting meetings in each month. I would too. Yep. I yeah. agree. I mean, we've condensed it down already. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 we did that to, to help the staff. And, and if there's a a better time to do it, is during the holidays to kind of alleviate some stuff on staff. On staff. There, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> the second and third Tuesday is what I'm hearing. On, on November. Of November. Yeah. So and then on. find another one in December. So you want to do the second, third, in December also? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> That's simple. So the motion would be to change the schedule to meet on November 8th and November 15th and December 13th and December 20th. So moved. <laughs> okay. Any further discussion on that? Second. Any from the public? Okay. Do we have a motion uh, based on the revised schedule? Motion is second already Mayor, okay. on that schedule. I have motion second based on a revised schedule, correct? Revised schedule. Yes. Okay. November 18th, November, November 8th, November 15th, December 13th, December 20th. Okay. Vote, please. Passes unanimously. Sorry, okay, Mayor. always. I got a little carried away there. Oh, no problem. Uh, I got my uh, founding father's quotes. Uh, always like to end with and uh, you know with all the hyperbole we have in the in the news today based on the election uh, I think um, Thomas Jefferson had a good comment if we are to guard against ignorance and remain free it is a responsibility of every American to be informed thank you meeting adjourned amen